Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making Groovy Tech House Bass inspired by Fisher's song, Waiting for Tonight. And we're going to find out if we can do this in under 25 minutes by using the 80-20 rule of Tech House Bass. What you're listening to right now is a song that we'll be working on. And what you're looking at right now is the Ableton project file that we'll be working on. In particular, we're going to focus on this bass group right here. And we're going to go over things in the order that I actually created them, each layer one at a time, so that you can follow along when you're making your own tech house bass for your own tunes. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video. We'll be doing a full recap of the 80-20 rule so that everything that you're learning in this video, you can actually apply into your own music. Because all in all, it only took me about 25, maybe 30 minutes to recreate the bass for this. Uh, and if we zoom out and have a look at this track, it's going to be completely arranged, mixed, mastered, and ready to go. All on about six, maybe six and a half hours. So finishing songs faster just like this is something that you'd like help with. I've also made you a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one song like this every single week. Visit the link that's on screen now or in the description to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And if you want to take things to the next level, you can also find a link to this video's project files in the description as well. With that said, let's jump into this. All right, all right, all right. So when it comes to the bass for this one, first thing like normal is make sure you have the reference track in your project file. So we have Jennifer Lopez and Fisher's tune waiting for tonight up in here and I've turned it off and I have it set up. So when I press the S key, it solos it. So you can flick back and forth to get, um, make sure we're doing everything correctly, basically. Um, so let's jump into this. So there's two layers on this bass track, um, but we're going to start off with just one. So what I want to show you is this. The main sound of this is definitely a sub with like a little bit of kind of a, like a bouncy top. But let's jump into first the um, the MIDI notes. So there's two two sets of notes that we're going to look over. First, this is kind of like the verse and the main beat. It's like these two more held notes and then like a little bounce. Uh, mostly um, just like bouncing between this really. What I did was got this first bit here done correctly. And I, not gonna lie, the way that I did it was just flicking back and forth, listening and trying to get things right. And then I set the, the Ableton key to the right key. Just like on Beatport, I saw that, that this is what it was saying was the key. So it made it, so it was limiting the amount of notes that I had to figure out. Uh, just followed along here with the purple here. Made it a little easier to figure out. Then once I had that done, I just made these small little kind of like adjustments. Some notes play a little bit longer, some a little shorter. There's some way to like make it so this very one bar loop has some changes happening over time. Um, makes it more human, makes it a little bit more interesting to listen to. Then in terms of the sound, what we're running into is a pretty basic sub sound. Uh, this is a little rack that I made called the V sub and um, it's just using an, an operator. For the most part, it's just a, uh, a sine wave. Uh, so super duper simple, uh, full sounding and awesome. This rack just allows us to dial in a little bit of extra saturation. It has a uh, side chain built right into it. So it can just have one off side chain, boom, and we're done. Um, usually I had a bit more drive, but this is a very clean sounding sub to me. If you listen, very simple, very clean, very nice and full. Um, then what we're doing next, is then once I, I usually have two layers like this one reason i like this is one you can have it so your sub layer is just taking care of all the low end and you're really just focusing on that so that way when you add in like the mid bass bit layers that add more character and like a bit of vibe um you can play around with the mid bass in ways that you, like you're unrestricted because you don't have to worry about like oh what if i make do this big add this weird distortion to it and it destroys the low end you don't have to make those choices and worry about that because your sub is just taking care of the low end it's doing its thing and you can go do sound design to your heart's content on like the mid bass layer in addition to that i always find that when you're picking your notes and figuring all that out like all this a sub is very similar to like almost working with a guitar or a piano very clean like sound, not a lot of sound design stuff that can like mess with you. So you can really just focus on getting the right notes. So I really like that. It's really similar to like figuring out something on an acoustic guitar or something first, something like that. Next, that thing that I added is this mid bass. So let's have a look and listen to that. And I'd like to solo it for you too. So what I was hearing 
that like bong kind of sound sounded to me like a 808. Um, so I went for an 808 sound. First, as usual, let's start off with the notes. So as you can see here, there are no MIDI notes in this MIDI track. And so this is the uh, trick that I like to do. Um, over here at the top, normally it's set to all ends. When it's set to all ends, it's gonna be looking at the MIDI notes in the track to decide what notes to play and then play them through the VST or the sound or whatever. If you instead select something like subs, like what I did here, it's gonna route the MIDI notes from this track into this one. And why I find that useful is this way, as you're working through the tune, if you make changes to the MIDI notes here, you don't have to like do like a crazy copy and paste job and move them over to the other track. It's all in one, one piece, it's all working together. You have one track doing the notes and the other one is just following it. So you can make changes throughout the song. I really, really like that flexibility. You just need to make sure you flick it to subs and you set it to in because you set it to off. It's not gonna work. So you wanna just set it to in so that it's actually gonna, gonna play it live. In terms of the sound here, what we got going on, and I just one real quick thing, when you do this trick, it's a good thing to have an uh, Ableton like pitch device in here so that you can like quickly make that sound jump up an octave or two octaves or down an octave. Uh, in the case that say the sub sounds really good at a particular octave and that octave doesn't sound right with the mid bass layer, maybe it's too low or too high, just so you don't have to like go back in and duplicate the MIDI and shift it up or down. You can just do that right here. Uh, in this case, they worked together nicely. And so away we went. In terms of the sound, using a Vital, which is a free uh, plugin, it's similar to Serum, but basically it's free, so I definitely would check it out. And what I'm using here is there's an absolutely, absolutely, absolutely amazing YouTuber and artist named Be The Lick. And um, he had a, a video where it was going over bass sounds, or maybe it was like UKG bass sounds, I'm not sure, but basically just uh, gave away a bunch of cool presets. So I found one that he was using here. And one cool thing is he also adds these little macros so you can kind of like adjust right here to adjust the sound a little bit. Uh, so basically I just threw it in. It already sounded amazing because he's freaking awesome. And then just adjusted the macros here to kind of fit it in because it's kind of more subtle if you listen to the reference. It's pretty subtle, nothing too crazy going on here. Just a little bit of that like gliding 8080 kind of sound is what I was going for. So that's a look at that. Definitely check out his channel as well. And then um, kind of standard channel strip. So this is the channel strip I have on every single one of my tracks. Um, that way I'm able to quickly mix as I go, mostly just using my ears because it's all like one knob effects and stuff like that. First off is EQ. One of the biggest things is when doing the two trick, two layer trick with the bass, uh, you're gonna wanna remove a bunch of the lows on your mid bass. So that way you're making room for the sub to shine through and you're not having too much overlapping frequencies and maybe phase or just like too much overlapping makes mud in that in those areas. So you wanna remove it so that the, the sub can shine through. And then what I'd use was a low pass filter to dial out some of the highs, kind of blend it in and make it so it's not like jumping out too much. If we turn this on. Sounds louder. It sounds sick to be honest. I still like it like that, but this is a way to just kind of blend it in. Because the original tune, super subtle, right? So this could be maybe something if I want to like turn this into my own tune, remove that. But the idea is to kind of blend it in, remove some of the highs like that. Then we're running into a transient shaper. So what this is, is the free kilohertz uh, transient shaper. And this allows you to shape the transient. So like the initial hit of any, of any note. And so what we're doing here is we're bringing down the sustain and that's making it so like the decay almost of the tune of the sound is being shortened. And yeah, you can definitely do that in like synthesis, but I'm not really good with that. And I'm not really interested in sound design. Uh, I like more like sampling and shaping stuff after the fact. So that's my preference. I'm sure there's a million and one ways you can do anything, but this is the way that I like to do it. Then what I'm running into is this width plugin. And so what this is, is another free plugin uh, from Polyverse called Wider. And that's a really, really awesome free plugin for making things stereo. And I just mapped again the key like knobs to this Ableton rack so that you don't have to open up the plugin. You don't have to like be distracted by the, the user interface. Just this stuff is always ready to go. It's the default on all my, all my tracks and I can just quickly bring in some width, adjust it by ear uh, and then move on. So this is making the mid bass a little bit wider, uh, pushing it to the left and right a bit, making it a bit more stereo, which is allowing the bass to sound like kind of fuller and awesomer. Then what we're running into is uh, so the one knob side chain. So this is the same one knob side chain that's built into that um, sub device here. Um, and what this is, I'll show you what this is. 
is it's an Ableton shaper device doing this like little shape and it's running to quarter notes and it's just ducking uh, at this rate the gain. And since the kick is usually quarter notes, um, this way you don't have to like set up a compressor and route this to the, the kick and then like adjust the ratio and the threshold and all this stuff just to get like kind of that pumping sound. It's a nice way you can have it in with one knob, dial it into taste, use your ear, move on. And I, yeah, that's kind of the, like, what I really like to do with this kind of stuff. Um, and then we're running it into an Ableton saturation device. This is just Ableton saturator. Again, just mapped it to like a rack here. That way, you're not looking at it, just dial it in. And this is adding in some extra harmonics making it a bit more, adding some fullness to the sound and a little bit of grit and texture. Um, that's gonna look at that. Other than that, main thing is for each of these things, trying to get the volumes right after you've got the sound right and after you've got the notes right. And then I grouped it all together and then I'm running it into a K clip. Um, I think there's probably not much going on here. Uh, this is just a nice way to uh, make sure it's not going above zero or anything like that. Um, and yeah, normally you might do some kind of group processing, but in this instance, I think it sounds simple and good and, and I'm pretty happy with how it sounds. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do next is an overview of the 80-20 rule. So you can apply everything that you've learned here to your own productions when you're building up your bases. Before we do that, I want to mention uh, that this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Rocket Powered Sound. They've hooked up the kick drum that you're hearing. I have layered two different kick drums from their ultimate sample pack, which is a sample pack filled with over 1,000 really iconic and usable sounds. And uh, you can grab that for 30% off using the code and the link that's on the screen now. It's Ultimate Best Friends. And uh, there's also a link in the description as well. And you can get 30% off that. So definitely super big thank you to the Rock Pirate Sound crew for hooking us up. And if you grab the project falls for this as well, you'll be able to get the Rocket Powered Sounds uh, samples that have been included in this. So another nice little bonus that really love these dudes for hooking up the community here. So uh, big thank you to them. And with that said, let's jump into the 80-20 rule for this one. Hi, my friend. Matt from Best Friends Club here. And if you've been paying attention, then you probably have already figured out what the 80-20 rule is when it comes to building out your bases. So the goal here is to get 80% of the result with only 20% of the time, energy, or effort. And because the first key to the 80-20 rule of bass is to use a reference track, we're making sure that we're very easily hitting 80% of a very professional sounding track. In particular, we focus on nailing the notes that our bass is playing, the sound design of our bass, as well as the volume of our bass track compared to that reference track. This just keeps things fast and super focused. The second key of the 80-20 rule here is to layer your basses so that you have the maximum amount of control over your bass's melody, low end, and the character or vibe. The third and final key is to repurpose your old projects by adding old project files, racks, and entire groups to your Ableton collection folder. By creating a suite of powerful templates, Ableton racks, and one knob effects that you've personalized and curated over time, it's gonna make sure that you get a higher quality result faster. If you'd like to get a head start by downloading all the racks, templates, and all the files that you've seen me use in the Ableton project file for this video, or if you'd just like to take a closer look at any of the techniques or tracks you saw me work on in this video at your own pace, you can find a link to this video's project files on screen now and at the second link that's in the YouTube description. I'm recreating a different song from the Beatport top charts every single week and making the project files available to anyone who wants them. You'll also get access to a private Discord where you can ask me and the community questions as well as shared tracks for feedback. If you or your music are not quite ready for a shot in the arm like that, I've also made you a completely free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that have helped me figure out how to completely finish one new song each and every single week. And you can grab that free ultimate song finishing toolkit by visiting the first link that's in the YouTube description here. However, if you just feel like staying on YouTube for now, that's totally fine. Save that link for later and check out this playlist of videos where I remake basses from other songs from the Beatport top charts. Or if you want to take what you learned in this video to the next level, definitely check out this video right here.